You want to have a child. This doctor says you'll have a better chance if you're healthy. Mm. You leave there that day. You must also have it in the back of your mind that people are paying you millions and millions and millions of dollars. I think around that time that year, you made like $20 million in movies mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, they're paying you because you fit this persona that they want. Yeah. So, so as soon as I started telling people in my team about this, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Why would you want to lose weight? Like that. No, I wouldn't. If I was you, I wouldn't do that. Because then you lose your multi-million dollar pigeonhole that you've so successfully created. And look at all the work you've done to get that. And now you're just going to throw it away? So I was then literally like, okay, what do I do with my life? Am I get healthy? But I lose my career? Or do I just stay the way I am and maybe never have a child? And like that was literally kind of how it was positioned to me. and. So even though literally everyone around me pretty much said, stay as you are, I just felt like, nah, I got to, <laughs> I think I know deep down that I'm engaging in unhealthy behaviors and I'm going to, I'm going to work on my health and try to have a child. Thinking at that point, I know it sounds simplistic, but thinking that my career could be over then. But I was like, nah, it's too, that's too important. Going on that journey, losing the weight and all those kinds of things is never a straight line. Yeah. No, it's, it was, the, I mean, the pandemic helped a lot because literally everything stopped um, and and I could just focus uh, focus on being healthy. It was, it, that became a big blessing um, to me. And when I really focused and did the emotional work, because there's things like that I write about in the book that I just never thought about until I started emotionally processing things. Did one of your contracts say, I think it was pitch perfect, say that you couldn't lose 10 pounds of weight contractually? Yeah, so that's like quite common. You can't drastically change your appearance. So that's pretty much in all acting contracts. Um, it's not just about weight. It's about your hair, you know, what, what you look like. Um, and you can't go, you know, too much either side. Um that's basically because sometimes in films you have to do reshoots uh, or sometimes, you know, they might want to do a sequel or something and so you kind of have to stay the same. So literally, like, I have to ask somebody if I'd want to cut my hair right now uh, to a different colour or style or whatever. It's just, it's just a thing in the business because you could be asked to do a reshoot on a film a year later. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of look the same. So this journey of losing weight, tell me about this process. What helped you? So I was like, as you can probably tell, like I'm quite goal orientated, and uh, and so I was like, okay, 2020 is going to be my year of health. I'm themed it. I'm going to put it on Instagram, so I'm like held responsible. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other times it would be a bit more private. Like, okay, I'm going to go to this health farm or whatever, and I'm like, okay, it's going to be my year of health, and I'm just going to focus on being healthy. And um, the the thing Anne Hathaway had introduced me to this doctor who was. Um, great because I th guess she saw me on a film we did together called The Hustle and she kind of saw me struggling mm -hmm. and his specialty was kind of delving into emotional emotions and how they can affect your physical health mm -hmm. and I never even thought about that like I just thought you know going on a diet is about eating less and exercising more and um, I just never thought but to me because I was an emotional eater really the kicker was that to process emotions and to learn how to process emotions. And obviously from my family environment, I had definitely not learned um, any skills in that area and was kind of holding on to everything like a so like a bag of groceries of this little trauma and this and, the, and they are holding on to it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to start processing that um, with the doctor. Like we did a phone call every two weeks. And, and at first it's awful. You're like, oh my God, what do I talk about? You know, and talk about my personal things. And it felt awful to do it at first. Um, and then I did it and then gradually it kind of, I started processing things and then I could release them, the emotions and, and then, and then the weight loss kind of came. But because I wasn't working, I, I did do crazy workouts. Like I was wor working out like two hours, two and a half hours a day um, to help, you know, to help accelerate it. I was cooking my own meals. I was, you know, concentrating on eating 
high protein meals and like I was just doing all the right things because I didn't have any stress of work and um and I was just like okay this is going to be it but the real thing was the emotional what what are those bags that you let go of emotionally I think a lot of it like I don't think I would have been able to write this book if I hadn't have done that uh, emotional work with the doctor because um there were just stuff that I suppressed, you know, a lot of stuff about my father and my complicated relationship with him and and the sadness of him dying. Um, uh, he suddenly had a heart attack and uh, and died, right, you know, close after Pitch Perfect 1 came out. Um, and I think just all these little things in my childhood um, that – you know, I just, I guess I never thought that that was associated with my weight, but it obviously was. And because I hadn't processed the things, it was was like I was holding on to barriers. It was like the weight was a barrier, one for like intimacy, for example, you know, I never wanted a relationship or wanted to be attractive or whatever. And the weight was kind of a barrier because that kept all the people is, is, do, you, do you believe that? I've heard that from psychologists a few times, even on this podcast before. I've heard one particular guy called Johan Hari, who wrote a book called Lost Connections, tell me that in a study where they looked at um, women who were clinically obese and then they put them through a weight loss program, mm. they found that some of the women would then re regain weight and the catalyst for that was them being hit on. They discovered in those women that there was oh. early sort of abuse or there was issues. So they, they made this link that sometimes we use weight as a defense from sort of sexual advances or and I definitely was because I wanted to be in the fat funny friend role which I played quite well in real life and on screen because I didn't you know I didn't want somebody to be coming home with me and then seeing how I really lived or felt you know why I don't know I guess I just was embarrassed or you mentioned that you experimented with a Zempec Oh, I did. But I wish I'd known about it in 2020. Mm, it wasn't big then. No, I didn't even, if I had known about it, I would have tried it hundred mm. um, percent. But more for, uh, I, once I'd lost like 35 kilos, I was like, I can't continue working out and having this level of focus. Like I mm. can't. And I was very worried that the weight would come back on. And then now, like, I mean, now I have gained back um, 10 kilos or so because of, um, I guess having a baby, I, I just can't work out in the level that I used to. And then I directed a movie, which was a lot of sitting on a chair all day long and mm -hmm. being stressed, still stress eating and which I'll get under control when I'm, you know, not working seven days a week. Um, uh, and so I have tried it for a few months for like weight management, I guess you'd, Did it help? I guess you'd call it. Um, I definitely noticed that it, it did, I have like an unlimited ability to eat sweets and chocolate and ice cream and stuff. And that drug helped, um, for me not to feel full, mm -hmm. whereas I wouldn't feel like that before I would just could eat a ton of it. Like, you know, um, so, so I actually, actually liked it, but, um, yeah, I know. I think, I actually think for people like me, those drugs can be really effective but obviously I'm not on it right now but maybe if I you know prescribed it by a doctor I'd go back on it when you lose weight your resonance with your audience changes as well mm -hmm. because to a, I, mean, I think Adele spoke to it as well and when she lost a lot of weight she there was a backlash yeah I mean just... I think there was some people going oh she won't be funny anymore but then I had this movie come out senior year where I play a cheerleader who went into a coma and then wakes up 20 years later. And uh, that was my first big comedy and it got something like 89 million unique Netflix accounts watch it in the first 10 days around the world, which was huge, huge, huge numbers. So I was like, oh, well, I think they're probably, the people are wrong about that, that I won't be funny anymore. Or, But did they feel let down? I think people? some people did. It's like, say, if you're in a family and, your sibling makes a change for the better and then you feel like, oh, well, it makes me feel bad because I didn't make the change mm -hmm. and it makes me feel not as good about myself so therefore I'm going to hate them for for changing. How dare they change? How dare they try to rise above? Mm -hmm. um, and I think there is 
some attitude. But then you think to those people, what would make them happy? You go like the John Candy way and you die of a heart attack or, you know, something happens to you. Like you get some serious, uh, I mean, my father died of a heart attack with complications with diabetes. So I was like, I was heading towards the diabetes route if I kept going. I was like, well, does that make those people happy? Or you just stay as you are and be unhealthy and then you die prematurely. That's not a great outcome. Like what do those people want? But I think as a comedian, you have so many different things in your toolkit uh, and mainly they're your personality. And uh, so even though it's easy to go, oh, you have that physical irregularity and that's why people laugh, there are so many other elements. It's not as simplistic as that. And so I just utilise slightly different things. Have you noticed any change in the way that people book you professionally or, or respond to you professionally or the roles you're given based on your... Well, now I do a lot more dramatic stuff. I mean, I'm still obviously doing the comedy stuff. I mean, I've just directed a movie, which is a big, huge new career step. But yeah, I've got a movie coming out, The Almond and the Seahorse here in the UK, which is totally serious. And I just played Lady Capulet in a film, which is totally not what you'd think I would I would do. Uh, and it's awesome, but it's kind of how I started my career doing Shakespeare and stuff um, before I was bigger. And so it's kind of coming back now to, to doing that kind of thing. But more I noticed, um, I mean, now I'm kind of in the middle because I'm like, I've gained back some weight. It was so weird to be to be someone who f- walks around the world kind of feeling a bit invisible, um, attractiveness wise. And then suddenly I lost all this weight and got so much positive validation. Like it was insane. Like people would open doors for you or carry your groceries to the car for you or offer to do something for you or whatever. And I just, it was so weird to experience that. And I've experienced both sides of the coin, like to be kind of being invisible in that area and then to be visible. And it was, it was bizarre. It was like the attention. And I was like, oh, is this what hot people feel or get all the time? Um, and they get this kind of positive bias in society all the time. Um, and I got such positive reinforcement for losing weight, um, from the press and from people, like every single person would make some comment about it. And, and it's hard not to fall into liking that. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.